Hey guys, it's Brother Ray Jones with the First Church of God in Princeton, West Virginia. I want to welcome you to what is going to be a little bit different of a Sunday morning worship service. Uh, we are not going to be worshiping through song together this morning because uh, I am pre-recording this message only to um, talk about Thanksgiving because I am under quarantine because I got diagnosed with COVID. Now, uh, the bad news is I got diagnosed with COVID. The good news is um, I'm relatively symptom-free. Uh, just to kind of read you in on what had happened, I had been battling some other kind of bug and testing negative for COVID and for flu and was told I had some other kind of bug or crud that just needed to run its course. And I thought it had run its course. And somewhere along the way, um, <coughs> Excuse me, I was still battling a little bit of a cough like you just saw there. And then uh, last Sunday night, uh, later in the evening, I went to put on some of this. Opened it up, rubbed it on, and noticed that I didn't smell anything. And um, I thought that was weird, and I literally took it, put my nose to it, and could not smell a thing. That's when I knew something was up, guys. And the next day, this past Monday, uh, I went and got COVID tested and unfortunately confirmed that uh, I was positive for COVID. So uh, that's kind of prompted us to go virtual only for a period of time. And in all likelihood, this will be uh, the last service that we have to do that is virtual only. So uh, thank you for your prayers for me, first and foremost, and thank you for understanding the reasoning for having to go virtual. And, uh, hey, some of the advantages to this this time is I'm pre-recording this, which means when it airs on Sunday, and as you're watching it now, I get to watch it with you and participate with you. Some of you are thinking, all right, now he's going to see what we've got to endure every time we sit and listen to him. If that's you, if that's what you've been waiting for, hey, you get your shot today. I'm in the audience with you as well. And again, thank you for being a part of this time today. If you have your Bibles, I want you to look with me in Luke, the 17th chapter. We're going to talk together today about uh, Thanksgiving. It is the holiday that is coming up in just a few days. And uh, let me give you just some quick backdrop to this particular holiday. It was in the autumn of 1621 that a group of 53 pilgrims who had sailed to the New World on the Mayflower, held a feast to celebrate the successful harvest of the year. Now, each one of them had endured significant hardship on their journey to this new land. Uh, many had loved ones who died on the journey, and each of them knew the pain of loss to some degree. Yet in spite of all of these difficulties, they chose to count their blessings. So the holiday that we now know as Thanksgiving has its roots in this story. Now, most of America will spend this coming Thursday eating a big meal with family and friends. And I hope that's something that you get to do. But as you and I prepare for this special day, I want to challenge us all to make this thing called Thanksgiving more than just a holiday, but also a habit that we cultivate. Now, basically, it's real easy for us to think about being thankful this time of the year. But I believe Thanksgiving should be something more than something we practice around Turkey Day each year. It ought to be something we do year round. And if we're going to make this thing called giving of thanks or Thanksgiving a habit, I want to suggest a few things that's going to help us make that happen. The first thing we need to do is understand that <clears throat> expressing gratitude or being thankful has spiritual significance to it. Look with me in your Bibles in Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. <clears throat> Excuse me, in this particular portion of Scripture, we read the account of how Jesus uh, is heading to Jerusalem, and he passes through Samaria and Galilee. He goes into a certain village, and then there were, there were 10 lepers who uh, were in that village, and they heard that it was Jesus who was coming through. And they begin crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. And let me give you a little bit of context behind the significance of this. These 10 men who had been diagnosed with leprosy 
had to be isolated, quarantined, if you will, from the people they love, from family, from friends. They couldn't go to work. Um, they were basically sentenced to die, okay? And uh, anytime anybody got anywhere near them, they had to cry out, unclean, unclean, to warn those who were healthy, who were coming their way, that um, they had leprosy and they didn't want to get infected. So these 10 lepers, uh, when they hear that Jesus is, is coming by, instead of crying out unclean, they had heard about Jesus and they trusted him. They believed that he could heal them. And as we uh, read on in the story, you pick it up in, in verse 13. They lifted up their voices. They said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And it was so that as they went, they were cleansed. Imagine this, part of the, the ceremonial uh, cleansing that had to take place or part of the process they had to go through if they were deemed healed. They had to go show themselves to the priest and they had to be declared um, clean again so they could return home. They had to go basically get their negative COVID test result, okay? Um, and as they're going to show themselves to the priest, in, as according to this story, they realize they're healed. And can you imagine that with me for a moment? We don't know how long these men had been away from their families. We don't know how long they had dealt with everything that comes with a, a terminal disease and, and having to be isolated and quarantined. What we do know is that suddenly they realized they were well and they wanted to get their paperwork and they wanted to get back to life. They wanted to get to their families, their friends, their jobs, their, their social life. And who could blame them, my friends? That, that would be something we would all want to do. But of these 10, when you read on in the scripture, it says one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned around and he went back and he put his face to the ground right before Jesus's feet. And he gave thanks to Jesus for what he had done. And Luke notes in the recounting of the story that this particular person, this leper who came to give thanks was a Samaritan. Verse 17 says this, so Jesus answered and said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not found, uh, not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And what's the significance of this particular story? Of the 10 who were made, who were healed, only one returned to give thanks to Jesus. And that one who said, who took the time to express his gratitude, Jesus looked at that one and said, hey, you've been made well or whole. Now, I want to tell you today, um, there's a difference between just being healed and being made whole. And though nine or all 10 were healed of leprosy, the only one who was pronounced whole was the one who took the time to say thank you. There is spiritual significance to that, my friends. We not only need to receive the blessings from God that he wants to give us, but we need to be grateful for them and we need to express that gratitude um, regularly and clearly. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 16 through 18 gives us another insight into the spiritual significance of being grateful. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, beginning there, says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, note what Paul is telling the Thessalonians. He's saying here that we need to rejoice always. We don't need to be happy for everything that's happening but we can rejoice in the Lord no matter what our circumstances are. We can pray no matter what's going on. And he goes on to say, in everything, express gratitude. That doesn't mean we have to express gratitude for everything, but regardless of our circumstances, 
Christ can help us to have the habit of giving thanks and not just celebrate a holiday that we call Thanksgiving. Paul goes on to say, it's God's will that we be grateful. Look at what it says in verse 18. In everything give thanks because this, or for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Someone has said, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but it is the mother of the rest. I believe that is true, my friends. And I believe if we're going to cultivate the habit of thanksgiving, we need to first understand its spiritual significance. The next thing that we need to do if we're going to cultivate this habit of thanksgiving is we need to realize that giving thanks is more often a choice we make before it's a feeling that we feel. Um, I try to live by the mantra that you act yourself into feeling before you feel yourself into acting. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. While there are times that we, we need to listen to our feelings first, um, I believe there are more times when we need to be careful to not be led by our feelings. This idea of being grateful, I've had to put it into practice at times when I didn't feel very grateful. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to say fake it till you make it. What I'm trying to say is this. Um, we more often act ourselves in the feeling than we feel ourselves in the acting. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, if I waited until I felt like running, I would probably never run. Most days when I go out for a run, I don't feel like doing it. But as I get out and go after it, and I get through that first mile, I'm always glad I ran. I act myself into feeling instead of feel myself into acting. This works with gratitude. And I found this to be true. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in mourning the loss of a loved one, what is very, very common and even healthy to do is to acknowledge one of the things you're mourning is the time you're not going to get with that individual anymore. Um, if you've ever felt that, you're human and you're grieving and there's nothing wrong with that. But one of the ways that you get through your grief and get on the other side of it is by reaching that point where you're not only leaning this way saying, I'm not going to get any more of this with my loved one because they're gone. And you, you, you begin to let the scales tilt this way and say, you know what? I'm grateful for the time I did get with them. And I'm going to focus more on that instead of on this. Trust me, my friends, while that's not easy, an easy place to get to, when you get there, it makes things a whole lot easier. And gratitude helps us with that. If we're going to cultivate, <coughs> excuse me, the habit of thanksgiving. We need to understand the spiritual significance of giving thanks. We need to understand that we need to act ourselves into feeling more than feel ourselves into acting. And then we need to intentionally focus on what we have to be thankful for. Um, this takes some effort on our part, but it is worth it. Uh, earlier this year, I've taken a few different trips down to North Carolina uh, to visit uh, uh, earlier in the year was Robert and Shelby Green and most recently just Robert Green. And um, if you've traveled down to North Carolina, depending on what time of day and time of year you're going, you can run into a lot of traffic. And I seem to run into a significant amount of traffic on 77 on each of these trips. Some of it was construction. One time it may have been a wreck. Anyway, I ended up um, in some traffic jams. And after I got through those traffic jams and got back to Princeton, I don't complain near as much about being on Stafford Drive around anywhere from 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 5 o'clock in the afternoon anymore, if you know what I mean. Once you sat on the interstate at a standstill for an hour or more, Stafford, Stafford Drive uh, traffic doesn't bother you near as much, okay? Uh, we've got to intentionally focus 
on what we have to be thankful for. Someone, I take no credit for this, I want to read it to us, but someone put it this way. More often than not, we simply have to find the bless in the mess. Lord, thank you for this sink of dirty dishes. We have plenty of food to eat. Thanks for that pile of laundry, Lord. We've got plenty of clothes to wear. Thank you for those unmade beds. They were so warm and comfortable last night. Many have no bed. Lord, thank you for this bathroom complete with all of its splattered mirrors, grimy towels, and dirty sink. They are so convenient. Thank you, Lord, for the finger smudge refrigerator that needs cleaned out so badly. It has served us faithfully for many years. It has plenty of food and drinks in it for a few meals. There are so many who are hungry. Thank you, Lord, for this oven that must absolutely be clean, uh, clean today. It has baked so many things over the years. Father, the whole family is thankful for the grass that needs mowing and the leaves that need raking. We all enjoy the yard. Thank you, Lord, for the noise in my house. My kids are healthy and able to run and play. Lord, the presence of all of these chores awaiting me says you have richly blessed my family. I shall do them cheerfully and gratefully. And even though I clutch my blanket and growl when the alarm rings, thank you, Lord, that I can hear. I know many who cannot. And even though I keep my eyes closed against the morning light as long as possible, thank you, Lord, that I can see. And even though I may huddle in my bed and put off rising, thank you, Lord, I have the strength to do so. There are many who are bedridden. Even though the first hour of my day is hectic when socks are lost and toast is burnt and tempers are short and the children are so loud, thank you, Lord, for my family. There are many who are lonely. And even though the breakfast table never looks like it is in the pictures and the magazines and the menu at times is not balanced, thank you, Lord, for the food we have. There are many who are lacking. And even though the routine of my job can sometimes be monotonous, Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to work. Many are unemployed. In short, Lord, thank you for life. Amen and amen. The last thing that I want us to understand about cultivating the habit of thanksgiving is this. Not only do we need to understand its spiritual significance and understand that we need to act ourselves into feeling instead of feeling ourselves into acting and intentionally focus on those things that we have to be grateful for, but the last one is simply this. We need to take time to express our thankfulness to God and to others on a regular basis. A man by the name of William Arthur Ward made this statement. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a gift and not giving it. How sad it would be to go to the trouble of purchasing a gift for someone that you really want to give a gift to, wrapping it up, and never bothering to give it to them. That is the equivalent, according to Mr. Ward, of feeling gratitude, but never taking the time to express it. So what are some ways that we can express our gratitude and cultivate the habit of thanksgiving? Well, one of them is really simple. Just look someone in the eye and tell them thank you. That's not hard, is it? Uh, thank you for tuning in and being a part of this service today. When we express and say a heartfelt thank you face to face, we're practicing and cultivating the habit of thanksgiving. Another thing you might be able to do is get your phone, make a phone call to someone. If you can't do it face to face, hey, why not at least do it voice to voice? Call someone. They would love to hear from you. You don't have to talk all day long, but just take a moment. And, to, and call them and say thanks. These phones are amazing for a whole lot of things, not just making phone calls. You can do a whole lot more with them now. Maybe there's somebody you could send a text message to. Thank you so much for your thoughtfulness. Thank you for taking time to listen to me earlier today. Thank you for the way you've invested in my life. A text message of encouragement and gratitude can make somebody's day. You might want to write an email. Uh, there are many people 
who love to get an email. And you can use your computer or your phone or your tablet, and you could just type out an email and send it to them, and that would make their day. Another thing you can do is get you a pack of thank you notes and hand write out to someone uh, your, your expressions of gratitude for them. Now, I want to really encourage you to consider doing this because I, I know how convenient email and text messaging can be and even making phone calls, but I also know the value of getting a note in the mail that's not a bill, that's not junk mail, but someone who's actually taken the time to hand write out something and, uh, and, and express gratitude, excuse me, to someone for what they've done. Now, for those of you who are a little younger, you might need to understand this takes some very real effort. You've got to write out the note, and it doesn't have to be like the Declaration of Independence. Of course, you can just be concise and, and specific and thank you for your thoughtfulness. You put it in the envelope, seal it up. You put their address on here, put the return address on. Then you've got to put a stamp on here, and putting that stamp on there is kind of like putting hitting the send button on a text message, okay? Then you actually have to get this to either the post office or a mailbox and drop it in. And I know that takes more effort, but I also know how thrilling it is to receive something like this from someone. And it's a, a great way to cultivate uh, the habit of Thanksgiving. <coughs> Excuse me. The last thing I want to suggest is this. Maybe in order to express your gratitude, you ought to give somebody a gift. Uh, a, a tangible expression of your gratitude to them. Um, I have found that most people, when um, I want to thank them, a plate of homemade cookies is a really good way to do that. I've been the recipient of some thank you gifts, and I've been able to give some thank you gifts. And uh, having been on both ends, I know that those are those are good things to do. Now, guys, um, as we think about this this thing called Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope you celebrate an amazing holiday with family and friends this coming Thursday. I hope you eat a lot of great food. I hope you watch some games, play some games. I hope you enjoy life and enjoy uh, the time that you get together. But I hope more than <clears throat> just celebrating a holiday, I hope that you will take this time to cultivate the habit of giving thanks. As we close this out today, I just want to simply ask you, uh, what do you have to be thankful for? I'm thankful that I'm getting better. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm thankful that we have technology to be able to share in a way like we're sharing right now. I'm thankful that if all things go as planned, I'm going to get to spend some time with my daughter and son-in-law and eventually my son and daughter-in-law and granddaughter in the not-too-distant future. I am thankful that you've taken time to be a part of this service today. Uh, not only what are you thankful for, but to whom do you need to express your gratitude? And one last question as we close out. How are you going to do it? How are you going to actually express your gratefulness that you feel in your heart to someone who needs to hear it or receive it. You're going to write a letter, a card, send a text, make a call. Maybe that person you're with right now, you just need to look them in the eye and say, I, I appreciate you for this. Thank you. Whatever it is, my friends, that you're really feeling grateful for or who you're feeling grateful for, please Take the time to express it. Again, I want to thank you for your time and attention. Uh, I pray that you have a great Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, I pray you are healthy and well. I appreciate your prayers uh, for me. Let's close in prayer together. Lord, we are thankful today for your grace and mercy. We are thankful, Lord, that uh, you've modeled for us and developed for us, Lord, the importance of being grateful. And I just pray, Lord, today as we close this time out that you would help us to make a fresh commitment to cultivate the habit of giving thanks. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you again for your time and attention. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving.